In today's news, a Rotary Club Sunrise of Rotown Part of One initiative makes good in assisting persons in need, and Disney increases layoffs to 32,000 workers as coronavirus battles its theme park businesses. And the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force appeals to BVI Public for information, and USVI Governor Bryant orders a soft two-week shutdown for government agencies. All these and so much more when 2A4 News returns. Welcome everybody, it's Thursday, November 26, 2020, a beautiful Thanksgiving day to each and every one of you. A thankful Thursday, I usually say terrific, but it's a thankful Thursday. Most definitely. And we are coming to you live and direct out of Tortola in the beautiful British Virgin Islands, our home, our paradise. I'm Ron Grant. And I am Kyla Kinesha Forbes. I do want to welcome you once again this evening for joining us. We have so much to get into, so Ron, let's just get into Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Before we get into our newscast, a police probe as to how Glenford Young came to perish in a lone scooter crash over on Virgin Gorda. Premier Foy warns hospitality professionals not to let tourists dictate or help protocols. And unfortunately, once again, gunmen allegedly opened fire on a vehicle in Long Look. Body recovered, identified as VG Man Franklin um, Malone, that is. USVI Governor Bryant, uh, Albert Bryant, that is, orders a soft two-week shutdown for uh, government agencies. We're going to get into that uh, and so much more. Also giving um, uh, essential workers and government uh, offices and agencies uh, mu a, a much-needed day off. So yeah. we're going to get into that. Uh, but beginning on our local scene here in the territory of the Virgin Islands, the Rotary Club Sunrise of Rotown is making good with its efforts to assist families across the Virgin Islands who are in need as a result of the global pandemic that is COVID-19. Now, not just as the holidays approach, but ongoing efforts of the club seek to consistently assist persons in need. Now, on Wednesday, yesterday, members gathered for a second time to assemble grocery bags packed with food items, um, and our team of reporters was present to witness the collective effort of the Power of One initiative by the Rotary Club of Sunrise. Take a look. JJJ Development, Honorable Kai Weimer, Mrs. Rosalie Adams, Penn Medical Center, various numerous donations for persons. $50, $50, $100 goes a very long way, and we wish to thank you all for this. During this Thanksgiving season, we are expressing our gratitude. 
Thank you, Director Fay. My name is Rosemary Flax, past president of Rotary Club Sunrise. When you look around at this room, you see names like Lewis, Penn Hodge, Burke, Leonard, Smith, Flax, Cameron. The, all these names represent a legacy of giving. We are just doing what we have seen being emulated by our forefathers. We are a giving people, a loving people. And today, I am so pleased that Rotary Club Sunrise, under this committee, under the guidance of Director Fay, has coined the phrase, the power of one. Just imagine one dollar, two dollars, ten dollars, one hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, thousands and thousands of dollars. How powerful that is. So I'm so grateful today that we can emulate our forefathers, not during Thanksgiving, not during Christmas, but all year round. And that is what Rotary is all about. Rotary is all about giving. Rotary is all about seeing that the less fortunate are risen from their situation due to various circumstances. And we are all here very happy, happy to be. Carla, in these very perilous times, we see where another organization, the Rotary Club Sunrise, is rising to the occasion once again. Uh, and of course, persons who are interested in getting a part, or being a part rather, of uh, this amazing effort. Uh, because believe it or not, we take a lot of things for granted. Uh, but with the effects of COVID-19, a lot of families, uh, particularly those with kids, are, are facing a difficult time. So if anyone wishes to be a part of the Power of One initiative by the Rotary Club Sunrise of Rotown, you are encouraged to contact any member of the Rotary Club uh, Sunrise of Rotown or visit them, send them a message on Facebook at Rotary Club Sunrise uh, Rotown. Ron, I absolutely love the initiative of the Power of One because I think when persons think of giving, you think that yeah. you have to have um, so much okay. or a lot to give to someone else. And I think just that video within itself shows that just doing just a little part, just one um, thing that you can afford can definitely just absolutely. multiply and be such a blessing to someone else. And I think it's and an it still takes a village. And I think it's yeah. such an amazing story to explore especially on this Thanksgiving evening. Now, as we move on, we see where the Rotown Policing Unit within the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force is asking persons who witnessed the scooter accident in Virgin Gorda that resulted in the death of Glenn Ford um, Young to come forward and assist with establishing the cause of this fatal collision. In the early hours of the 15th of November, Young, which was 30 at the time of a Tower Road Virgin Gorda was taken to the Nurse Iris O'Neill Clinic for treatment following the accident and immediately transported to the Dr. D. Orlando Smith Hospital where resuscitation attempts um, was proven futile. Now investigations led officers to the Lee Road where the accident occurred. No one was at the scene and there was no indication of what had caused the accident. Now investigators are aware that Young was accompanied by a number of scooter riders, possibly friends, as he headed towards Lee Road and was um, likely present when the collision took place around 1.34 a.m that morning now those individuals are asked to come forward and provide information about the accident the family members and the friends of young are hoping for an accurate account of the events which led to his demise now also ron 
We move on to the police are investigating the cause of the death of a male whose body was found washed ashore in Fat Hogs Bay, the area just after midday um, about two days ago. Now, the body is believed to be that of Franklin Malone, a resident of the Valley Virgin Gorda. Now, forensic tests will be required to make a positive identification. Malone was last seen on Thursday the 19th of November in the area of Beef Island where he was scheduled to board a vessel for Virgin Gorda. Now, persons who have any information regarding any of these two unrelated incidents are asked to contact the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force Intelligence Unit at 368-9339. That is 368-9339. Again, we're appealing to uh, residents of the Virgin Islands, anyone with information, it is uh, potent that you come forward. Um, at the end of the day, one of the things that we fail to realize is sometimes when we have tragedies is because we're a small community and because persons are sometimes so hesitant, uh, they don't want to come forward. But you have to put yourselves in a, a family member's position. So uh, at the end of the day, I think all of us uh, seek closure. And ultimately, uh, that is to the um, comfort of family and friends. Now, still ahead, National Behavioral Campaign reaches over 200,000 persons and Governor Albert Bryan of the USVI announces a two-week soft lockdown for government agencies as cases rise in the USVI. All this and more when 284 News returns. So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There's the answer, Cole. You're the man. I've been looking for this for weeks. Welcome back. You're watching 284 News. And now on the local scene here in the BVI, in a government information services release through the Ministry of Education, Culture, Youth Affairs, Fisheries and Agriculture, it has been reported that the ministry's campaign, Ministry of Education that is, uh, campaign on positive behavioral management has reached more than 20,000, that is, residents through digital advertisements and billboards. Now, the national campaign held in conjunction with the United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund in the British Virgin Islands and financed by the United Kingdom funding saw 369 teachers, principals, and education officers receiving training in behavioral management. The campaign also involved providing technical support and advice, uh, policy, and makes updates uh, to the student's code of conduct. Now, His Excellency, the Governor of the Virgin Islands, Mr. Augustus J. U. Jasper, congratulated the Ministry of Education and the UNI. UNICF, uh, UNICEF, that is, uh, for delivering an impactful campaign, Governor. Uh, Jasper said, and I quote, it has supported our teachers during a difficult year and brought long-term improvements to the BVI's education system. Thank you to the UK government for their funding and to all the hardworking officers at the ministry and UNICEF who made it a great success. Now, Deputy Premier, of course, and Minister for Education, Culture, Youth Affairs, Fisheries and Agriculture, Dr. The Honorable Natalia Wheatley also commended his ministry and UNICEF and the government of the United Kingdom for a successful campaign. Honorable Wheatley said, and I quote, the campaign conducted by the Ministry of Education and UNICEF with the support of the UK has helped to further the ministry's goal of enhancing resiliency through educational reform and has raised uh, the standard of the quality of instruction being provided by our teachers thanks to the hard work of UNICEF and the ministry. Now, the generous support of the UK and their commitment to raising and meeting standards in education has been reinforced. Now, the grant supported by the UK funding of 162,000 was split between four overseas territories to facilitate individual and national campaigns over the duration of this year. The government of the Virgin Islands through the Ministry of Education, Culture, Youth Affairs, Fisheries and Agriculture remains committed to a professional development and training of the territory's teachers and education leaders based on internationally accepted models of best practice. Kyla, this is such a very important uh, concept. When we look at behavioral uh, management, we face a lot of 
issues with our students across the territory as it pertains to education. And I think it's imperative that we continue to not only conduct such studies, but make sure that the data received by these studies are used to really enhance and enforce a better education system. Um, of course, uh, the ministry prides itself in uh, hosting uh, professional development, but I'd like to reiterate to the Honorable Minister, as well as the ministry, it's not enough to just hold uh, professional development sessions two weeks before school opens. It is imperative that this is continuous and that you make sure that students uh, cohesively and teachers are being trained uh, to deal with a lot of the issues uh, that face them. When you look at the education system, you look at the needs of students, whether it's special education, you look at um, uh, students with behavioral challenges. Right. Uh, at the end of the day, a lot of our educators are not prepared um, to deal with such standards. The system is not equipped in them. The system does not support them. Right. And you cannot, cannot expect that at the end of the day, you're going to give teachers two weeks before the semester um, and expect them to be prepared. So I'm appealing to them uh, to do a better job. I think you couldn't say it any better, Ron. Now, as we move on, Governor Albert Bryan over in the U.S. Virgin Islands on Tuesday announced a soft two-week shutdown that calls for government departments and agencies to perform remote work as much as possible. This was reported by VI Consortium, a local on news, online news site over in the U.S. Virgin Islands. He also announced administrative leave for non-essential workers Friday and the declared it a day of reflection and prayer. Now, additionally, Dr. Mr. Bryan urged Virgin Islanders to take COVID-19 precautionary measures for the Thanksgiving holiday, reminding that cases are surging on the U.S. mainland, a situation that could affect the U.S. Virgin Islands because of its ease to access to all Americans. Now he said, and I quote, we have to keep up our guard in order to survive this holiday season with no lockdowns. Mr. Ryan said Lieutenant Governor Roach and himself reflected on the year and the tremendous impact the tragedy of the pandemic has had on the community. Because of this, the governor granted non-essential government employees um, administrative leave for a day of reflection and prayer. Mr. Ryan urged uh, residents to utilize the time off to spend at home with their families reflecting on the many blessings they have received this year. Another reason for the administration leave is because of the record-shattering surge of COVID-19 cases on the mainland which is projected to worsen because of the holiday travel and family gatherings. He said and I quote, like most governors and public health officials across the country, I am nervous about the spread of the virus over the Thanksgiving holidays. As a result, Mr. Ryan has implemented a soft two-week shutdown. As a part of the effort, the governor has directed all agencies ahead with in the executive branch to reduce in-person work as much as possible for the next two weeks. The governor has also recommended employees to be given time off or work on staggered um, schedules. He urged all private employers to do the same. Lastly, Mr. Bryan is, um, issued a moratorium as a, on all permits giving for large events. He said, and I quote, we have to control the virus as much as possible. Mr. Bryan stated that there were some exceptions made for some sporting events such as flag football. However, from yesterday and forward, there will be no special arrangements made for anyone throughout the holiday season. Anything that attracts a large group of people in a public place, including sport tournaments and food sales, are all discontinued until further notice. The governor said, he said, and I quote, there will be no exceptions to this because this is not a time to be out. In lieu of the in-person event, Mr. Bryant encouraged virtual affairs. The governor also provided Thanksgiving celebration guidelines, they are move meals outdoor if possible. If celebrating indoor, open windows and doors to keep fresh air flowing. Limit the number of um, guests to 10 or less and do not attempt to have a mass gathering. Limit the number of people going in and out of the kitchen. Don't be embarrassed to ask persons to dropping by to wear their masks, keep six feet away from people you don't live with, encourage guests to wash their hands and use 
hand sanitizers. Now, Ron, I think all of these listed um, advice, I think they're all needed. And I think persons, I think we're not accustomed to this, but we have to just reiterate the fact that we are living in a pandemic and it's not just business as usual. Mm -hmm. Of course, we would love to go to our friends and our family's houses as usual, but it is just not business as usual as well. I definitely um, commend um, Governor Bryant's his efforts in the fact of, of seeing the fact that this year has been really difficult for many persons and giving this administrative leave to um, employees of the government really shows he is being empathetic to the whole situation. Absolutely. Yeah. One of the things that I think uh, ultimately uh, Governor Bryan is aware of, and it, it is evident in his statements, is the importance of Thanksgiving. Um, a lot of persons take for granted um, traditions, um, and this is no different uh, here for us in the Virgin Islands, the BVI rather. It's a bit different because we don't celebrate um, or observe the Thanksgiving as a holiday, but over in the U.S. Virgin Islands and uh, the U.S. mainland, it is a huge deal. Uh, so you, you don't want to feel as though you're taking tradition away from persons, but um, in the interim, it's very important that we uh, are aware of the protocols. Now, I will be the first to admit that these um, protocols and the even though this is a surf, uh, soft lockdown, uh, it's annoying, it's agitating, because at the end of the day, what it looks like and what it appears to be is that persons get into a routine of uh, somewhat going back to a level of normalcy and then they have to retract. Um, so I cannot imagine how frustrating that is for um, uh, persons. But at the end of the day, we're seeing a second wave, we're seeing a surge as close of to us as the U.S. Virgin Islands, and we have to uh, take precautionary measures. So we wish Governor Bryan and his team and the uh, territory of the U.S. Virgin Islands a very Mon best. What I will say about the soft two-week lockdown, um, as I see it, I think it is very proactive in an approach. Um, the fact that tax Thanksgiving is coming up yeah. and persons will be traveling, I think Governor Bryant has made an executive decision to say, hey, before this gets out of hand, mm -hmm. let's do mm -hmm. something softly to make sure that we are not in the same predicament that we have been in um, a few months ago. And you're absolutely right because when we look at the facts, one of the things that we have to observe is that our borders here in the BVI are still closed. Yeah. However, um, when it comes to the U.S. Virgin Islands, uh, persons are still traveling to and from the U.S. mainland um, to the Virgin Islands, so the risks are, are extremely still high. Uh, so he's doing what he has to do. Most definitely. Now, viewers, still ahead, Disney increases layoffs of 32,000 workers as coronavirus batters its team part business. And Baroness Sugg, a UK minister responsible for overseas territories, resigned from the UK government. Now, you hear, want to hear all about this, all this and so much more when 2A4 News returns. The wind. Oh! News. Coming to you live and direct from the beautiful British Virgin Islands. What's poppin', what's really good, what's happening, what's happening, what's up? Viewers, welcome back to 284 News, and I must thank you for sticking with us. Now, in this last act of our newscast, we see where the Baroness Sugg, a member of the House of Lords of the United Kingdom, resigned from the United Kingdom government through a letter addressed to the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, dated the 25th of November, 2020. In the first line of the letter, it said, and I quote, It is with sadness that I write to resign from government. Government, end quote. Baroness Suck is the Minister for the Overseas Territories and Sustainable Re um, Development. Her resignation is in protest of the UK government's decision to cut overseas spending. Now, Chancellor Rishi um, Shavuk, he announced that the foreign aid expenditure would be cut from 0.7% of its national income to 0.5%. Now, Baroness Suck, in her resignation letter, said, and I quote, 
many in our country face severe challenges as a result of the pandemic and i know the government must make very difficult choices in response she went on to say but i believe it is fundamentally wrong to abandon our commitment to spend 0.7 percent of our gross national income on development she explained that the united kingdom's commitment towards foreign aid should be kept even through mm. tough times she said and i quote this promise should be kept in tough times as well as the good given the link um, between our development spent and the health of our economy the economic downturn has already led to significant cuts this year and i do not believe we should reduce our support further at a time of unprecedented global crisis End quote. Now she continued by saying cutting UK aid risk undermining your efforts to promote a global um, Britain and will diminish our power to influence other nations to do what is right. I cannot support or defend this decision. It is therefore right that I tender my resignation. If it's not working um, and you're not um, your, your job as service to people, um, one of the things that people fail to realize when it comes to public office, uh, Kyla, is that it is service to people. And uh, like the uh, politician, Baroness Suggs, um, it, it seems as though she's frustrated and she clearly uh, is not being able to execute her duties of supporting uh, the OTs and persons yeah. that are in need. And she decided, she decided to resign, and I cannot fault her for that. I yeah. agree. Continuing on, Disney, unfortunately, is expanding the scope of its layoff to around 32,000 workers as the coronavirus pandemic continues to really take a toll on the theme park industry now. In a SEC filing published on Wednesday, the company revealed that thousands of employees will have their jobs terminated in the first half of fiscal year of 2021. Now, the majority of these layoffs will be from its parks, experiences, and products division and include about uh, 28,000 workers that the company previously announced in September, uh, prolonged closure at Disney's California-based theme parks and limited attendance at its open parks has forced the company to slim down its workforce. Now, in addition, as of October 3rd, around 37,000 employees who were not expected to be laid off were placed on uh, furloughed. Now, as of October 3rd, Disney employed around 203,000 people with its global workforce comprising of around 80% full-time workers and of course 20% part-time employees of its total workforce around 155,000 employees work as part of the parks experiencing and product segment now the division includes all of disney's domestic and international theme parks as well as its uh, resorts cruises line and merchandising now earlier this month of course disney said that covid 19 outbreak cost its park experiences um and products segment around 2.4 billion dollars in lost operating income during the fiscal fourth quarter now the segment saw revenue uh fail of 61 percent to 2.6 billion uh kyla this is uh very tough just like the tourism sector here in the british Virgin Islands, uh we see where uh, persons have taken a significant hit uh to their livelihood uh we fail to sometimes realize that over in the u.s mainland like the theme parks a lot of persons who work in these industries also rely uh heavily on the uh, product of people and yeah. interacting with people and with COVID-19 we have been unable to do that of course a theme parks uh, I'm not a fan of theme parks um, you're not yeah I'm, I'm yeah, <laughs> I not a fan am. of theme parks however um, I think it's important that we understand the severity of this and we continue to wish persons um, uh, the very best in this initiative um, as they really um, seek to uh, hold on to their livelihood, uh, hold on to their families' uh, well-being, and, and provide for them. It's very sad. I think um, over the course of this year, things has really just turned upside Spiral down. Spiral out of control. Most yeah. definitely. But viewers, we do have to wrap up because we are running out of time. Of course, it is always my pleasure. I am Kyla Kinesha Ford. And I'm Ron Grant. Uh, happy Thursday. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, we are thankful for each and every one of you and your viewership. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.